As the crisis unfolds, we look at the hundreds of indicators which show how bad things have become. And today we will discuss nine charts that prove a systemic collapse. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I want to get into these right away, so let's move into this, showing the euro falling below 109 after the U.S. jobs report. So, right here, first Draghi, then 295 U.S. jobs. Now, look how low it has come. Not too long ago, the euro was at 140 to the dollar. So, a significant drop. This is all changing, and this information happens to be out of the Wall Street Journal. Yields in Spain, Italy, and Portugal strike record low. I'll show you more of that in a moment. But essentially, wanting to show you this, Europe is definitely in trouble right now. And despite the fact that the US obviously has massive issues, it is simply in the short term, in this near term, looking better. I'm going to move on quickly right here, showing you the NASDAQ. And there it was, getting near the 5,000 mark, but of course it has come down. Now this is sort of a little sarcastic chart here, and you can see how people in their euphoria are unable to see how things all play out. They simply just ride the wave, hoping that everything will continue to rise. And this is uh, one chart that just shows you exactly how foolish some of these people really are. Let's move on to this, the NYSE Composite. It is unfortunately moved into a territory that it hadn't been for quite some time. And that's a lot of money. Now, this time, in fact, was when QE3 ended. And you can see how it put itself back to that territory. As long as they're printing money, the stock market can rise. But as soon as they pull back on that, they're going to have big trouble. And this is one very, very obvious indicator. Let's move on to this chart showing you lumber and obviously this is tied to the housing market directly and you can see how it has declined significantly back to the point in 2013, mid 2013 in fact, and just recently took a nosedive over these past few months. So that is one very important indicator showing you that. Let's look at this year to date jobs losses in oil exploration and extraction energy space. The BLS showed, and I've seen multiple numbers, but in this case here, 2,900 jobs lost. But if you actually look at the statistics, you're looking at 40,000 jobs lost. So the numbers that they're providing with us, to, to us, are completely fraudulent. And this is one very obvious indicator from 3,000 to 40,000. That is absolutely criminal the way they do this. But it is so good to know that those individuals out there recalculating these statistics are going to really shed light on this. And then I try to bring that out to you guys so you know the truth. Let's look at this. Jobs added by industry January and February 2015. And you can see that it is definitely not in the uh, good categories here for, for example, mining and logging. You can see how it is oftentimes part-time work that is where the jobs are increasing and of course these part-timers then get laid off but then they'll get hired again as temporary workers so that's consistently skewing the numbers of these jobs reports so to move on let's look at this jobs creation breakdown debt creation takes over the red line for those who can't see that is the federal debt moving up considerably, particularly uh, during this uh, past few years. But look at the federal tax receipts barely moving up in these 
past few years not making up for that debt at all. There are other things that you can look at for yourself, but we're essentially looking at a time and a place where the debt has expanded far beyond reason. At the same time, all of the other statistics, the so-called positive statistics, could not keep up with that. It is simply too much, too fast, and of course, no country could ever keep up to this. Subprime loan slash sales ratio has risen to a record high. I just covered this, in fact, how the auto industry is able to really have their, their own form of subprime loans. And we all know what happened during the housing boom because of the subprime loans. And of course, that did not end well at all. To move on, this is out of acting men. We're looking at Italy and Spain, their 10 year government bond moving to 1.3%. Look at the straight line downward that has been occurring here practically, you know, since 2011 just moving down and down and down and that's obviously going to show us where it's headed there is no reason why this will move up anytime soon the yield is incredibly low at this moment and all of this everything i've been showing you thus far in this video is all related to central bank policies and this is one of those and that is essentially printing money. And this is a diagram from my book, The U.S. Sells Its Debt to the Fed. So, of course, we have the U.S. giving bonds, which are just IOUs to the Fed, and the Fed giving it, in this case here, the $100 bill, and this cycle repeats. And then the Fed is left over with this pile of IOUs, and that is a debt accumulation. This continues on and on and on, and we can see the Federal Reserve, or whether it's the Bank of Japan printing over a hundred billion dollars every single month now and we see that with the ECB and their program and this is all just repeating these same cycles the debt is expanding to levels that are simply unpayable you have the interest rates at all-time lows you have these um, central banks giving out negative yield on their um, on the treasuries and uh, other debt instruments. And what is the result of all of this? Well, I could tell you it's not going to end well. Let's look at this article just to close off layoffs and empty streets as Australia's boom towns go bust. This article is out of Reuters, just talking about the reality of the situation. When you have a commodities boom, everyone moves into the town, the real estate prices increase, the uh, basically the whole economy begins to boom. But what happens when that commodity is no longer required, whether it's oil, whether it's lumber, whether it's iron ore and coal, you need to understand that we are going to have busts that occur. And this just happens to be one example of that from this article, but essentially trying to show you that yes, the commodities nations, whether it's for example, Canada and Australia, they'll do great when things are doing well in the global economy and the countries that they export to. However, as soon as they have some hard times ahead, you're going to have a major contraction. And that is happening in certain places. We see that happening in Canada in certain areas where the oil industry is obviously taking a beating at this moment. And then we have Australia as well having an issue right now. Lumber industries, think about all the uh, areas where they export lumber. Well, that's going to be a big problem for them at this moment. So these are just things to think about with the ripple effect and how each individual commodity is really a representation of that country and how this could really affect their economy as a whole. So if you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. I wanted to let you know that I'm doing a video specifically on bail-ins. I'm working on the diagrams right now. It's going to be part of my educational series, I'm going to explain what the bail-ins are, and then I'm going to get into every single example I could find and really explain to you how the bail-ins work and how our money is not safe in the banking 
industry in the banking system so i hope that you will uh, look forward to that one i'll try to bring it out if not um, tomorrow it'll have to be in the next couple days for sure but it is taking up some time because i'm drawing up these diagrams here so i hope you uh, will enjoy that as well i wanted to say hello to all the new subscribers if you want to get onto the insider, it's where I give out all my best intel for free, and that is available at themoneygps.com. You just scroll down to the bottom, fill in your email address, and you get occasional emails from me with good, short, concise info.